Let me ask the last yeah. big ridiculous question. Uh, so you've lived much of your life, your career is kind of at the edge of life and death. So um, let me ask kind of uh, several different ways the same kind of question. One, do, do you, have you pondered your mortality, the finiteness of it? And the bigger question to ask, even in the context of your uh, Tic Tac encounter is uh, what do you think is the meaning of this uh, thing we got going on here? The meaning of life, human life in this sense. So let me start with, have I pondered my own mortality? Yes, quite often. Um, and I don't get into my religious beliefs or what I am, uh, but I will tell you that I do believe in God. I, I've just seen too many things in the world that I can't explain. And some people will explain it by subconscious. So I'll give you a story, and this kind of puts in the thing of, do I fear death? So I had a good friend of mine that I used to fly with. We were stationed in Japan together, and, and Japan had this incinerator that put all kinds of dioxins. So there's a real high cancer rate for those that served on the base in Atsugi, Japan. Him and his wife had one son, um, and their son passed away just before his 18th birthday of cancer. And I was hanging out with, I'll call him John, and I was hanging out with John. We were in oil and gas. He had come to the same company, and, and we were doing an event together. And he was opening up to me because we were actually the demo pilots. We do the demonstration for air shows and stuff. And uh, him and I were sitting there talking, and uh, he was giving me the whole story and, and how he had, it really changed his look on life, that we're only here for a finite time and that we're all going to die. Well, unfortunately, after all that, when it was really going, him and his wife had moved to a location that fit their, you know, close to the water where they could do stuff, and I won't say where. Um, and he was doing what he loved to do, and he got diagnosed with throat cancer. And I was talking to him, uh, it was probably about maybe two months before he died. Um, and I said, dude, hey, you're sad. I mean, this is your friend. And I'm kind of really bummed out. And and this is the guy, this is a guy that's dying of cancer. And here's what he tells me. He says, Dave, dude, we're all going to die. He goes, but I have to look at it. I have to make the best of the time that I have. And I said, I understand that. And he goes, with the exception of not being with my wife, who he loved dearly. He goes, I'm okay with dying. I've had a really good life. And um, about, uh, cause actually the original announcement when he, when he finally passed away, a buddy of mine called me cause I don't do Facebook and his wife had put it on Facebook that he had passed. And about the day before he died, for some reason I was thinking about him and I had a dream or I think it was a dream or an altered reality. You can get into whatever. Uh, but he was there. It was just him and I, and I was really sad in the dream, I was actually crying and he was there and he was actually in his uniform. He was in his whites and, uh, cause he was Navy and we were just talking and he looked at me and he said, and this is in my dream. He's like, Dave, it's all going to be okay. And this is, this is like, and this is a vivid conversation I have with this and people are gonna think I'm weird about this, but, <laughs> um, but I, you know, I know what you know, my dream was and, you know, maybe it's my subconscious creating the dream, but in, in reality to me, this was real, that it was put there for a reason. He's, and he, he basically explained everything. He's, it's okay. I'm going to be fine. My wife is fine. He goes, this is, this is what's meant to be, you know, but, you know, and the bottom line was make use of every day that you have because you don't know. And literally two days later, I find out that he passed. Um, so. But ultimately he accepted the finiteness of it. He, he did. Well, you have to. And it's like I talk about, you know, money and job position and this and that. And I said, you can get in any, you know, you can go to a company. Just remember, when you want to be a VP of a company, you sell your soul to the company. You have to. I said, if you look, I joke with people at work. And I said, I said, you know, when you ever think that you're important or this guy has that, I said, when you're sitting on 93 or 95, 128, and you're sitting in traffic and we're stopped, which doesn't happen right now because of COVID, but normally it's stopped, it's bumper to bumper and you're sitting here like I was coming down here by the gas tank. Um... When you're sitting there, look left and look right, you know, and there can be a, a Lamborghini or an S550 Mercedes. And on the other side, there could be some piece of crap car. 
we're all sitting on the same freeway at the same time trying to do the same thing, which yeah. is just get home so we can be with our family. Because the most important thing that we have, it ain't money, it ain't our job, it's not our position. I go, because when it's all said and done, you could be, you know, you can be, with the exception of the presidents of the United States, I mean, name the vice presidents. Most people can't. Yeah. And eventually they're going to die. Or eventually you're going to see a statue of a guy from the 1700s in the Boston area and you're going to go, I don't even know who that guy was. Did he impact my life? He probably did. But eventually people forget. Yeah, you, you realize what's important now. And the one thing that you have is your family and your close friends. And that's, that's it. You can take all the money or everything else. If you're down on your luck, you know, who is going to be, we always just joke, who are your true friends? It's the person, well, there's a, there's a ones that I won't say, but you know, hey, you're broke down on a road in the middle of nowhere and it's three o'clock in the morning. Who are you going to call is going to get in their car without complaining and come and get you? And that's life. Those, that the, is life. The people you love. It's, it's, it's the people you truly care about. And contrary to, I have, you know, oh my God, I got 6,000 Facebook friends. You got about that many real friends that you can count on and that's it. And everything else doesn't matter. No, it doesn't matter. It doesn't mean you don't have to be nice. I mean, I have, there's acquaintance friends that I'll do anything for and they can come to my house and stuff. But then there's the people that, you know, you know, like my cousins who are like my brothers that, you know, at, at a moment's notice, you know, when, when my uncle passed away at a young age, you know, who lived literally right down the street from me and my cousin Chad, and I got two boys, there's, there's 14 of us, but there's only two boys. There's three of us together. And we all grew up in the same neighborhood, same schools, play football together, all that. I said, if one of those, if Ray or Chad ever needs me, if something happens, like when my uncle died, it wasn't a, it wasn't an issue if I'm coming home. It's I'm booking the ticket and I don't <laughs> give a shit what it costs right. because I will be there to, to be there with you. And and then those two guys and my college roommate is another one that I'm very, very close with. You know, you know, if it, there's, there's, there, I have a handful of people that, you know, I will drop literally everything, even if it my wife would be pissed at me at times. She's like, seriously, I got, I got to do it. Yeah. And now she knows, and it's the same thing with her. I mean, she knows that there are certain people in her life that if they really need her and she has to go, she would go and I would let her go. So, so given all that, I'm honored that you would uh, come here and talk to me and take the time. Dave, it was oh, one of the best fun. conversations yeah. I've ever had. Thank we were, you so much. It's a pretty long one. <laughs> it's it's probably sets the record for the longest one. Um, so, I, I, I mean, I, I'm I'm a loss of words. One of my favorite conversations. Thank you so much for talking to me, Dave. You're welcome.